Welcome to episode 236 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg. And my guest this week, the last show of 2022, Patrice is here. How are you doing, Patrice? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Um, I'm kind of feeling like, I don't know how this works anymore. <laughs> I haven't done a podcast yeah. in, uh, is it two weeks? Wow. Well, it's been a long time for you. Huh? <laughs> I think it's been it's either a week or two weeks. I don't remember. Feels like two weeks. So probably is. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm getting ready for having friends over for New Year's Eve tomorrow. And good. it's going to be fun. Great to hear. And uh, Jeff Gammon's back. How you doing, Jeff? I- I'm doing all right. And uh, I, I, I'm a little rusty, but I, I kind of remember how all this works. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, because I've only recorded one other show this week, which was That's right. uh, yeah, I missed you on Tuesday. Uh, Daily Observations with Ken Ray. Yeah, check that out. Nice. And I mentioned this pre-show, but I'll also mention it to everybody else that I just realized that it's been a whole long year that the three of us did this exact same show one year ago, I guess, 2021. So 2021, <laughs> 22, two, yeah. So let's so make we, this a tradition. Let's give it a cool have, name and make it a tradition. Yeah, we got to come up with a name, and this is a tradition <laughs> now because we we've, we've done this. I was oh yeah, back on episode 183. So it uh, hmm. it came up my Facebook feed. I completely forgot. <laughs> So, um, but we got a lot to talk about. We, um, we're going to do a bit of a year in review, um, some news stories and, uh, all kinds of other fun stuff. Got a couple of new stories here this week. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into those. Uh, this, uh, this first story is the iPhone 15 ultra hmm, won't be exclusively assembled by Foxconn. Uh, Apple has enlisted LuxShare to assemble the iPhone 15 pro max alongside Foxconn next year, according to, a Chinese research firm, Trendforce. It's unclear what percentage of the orders would be Lux share that will, f- will fulfill, but the move will help reduce Apple's risks of relying on a single manufacturer following all the workplace issues and everything else that going out there, especially the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max that uh, they had a heck of a time having stock. And <laughs> the uh, the stock market is, is not being very uh, uh, fair to Apple at this point. This, this, this stock is way down. Uh, I think this is a good idea. I don't understand. I never understood why Apple would would only do one, you know, one manufacturer. I know it's hard to to split mm-hmm. up, but I think <laughs> reality scale, is finally set yes. in. Yeah. What do you yeah. think, Patrice? At the scale that Apple is operating at, it's very very hard. I mean, uh, we could take bets. How long until Apple decides that they're going to start manufacturing themselves again? Like, I mean, they, mm. they did it in the past. Like, it's not. Yeah, they've it's done not a little being... bit of dabbling over the past mm-hmm. few years. Well, I mean, they they used to do a lot of it themselves mm-hmm. back in the day. So yeah, it's it's just a matter of when I think because, I mean, I think Apple is is realizing that like, it's just way too risky to do everything. I mean, I think every I think it's like ninety something percent of all iPhones come out of uh, whatever I don't know how big like the, the area is, but like maybe a couple million square mile area in China. I don't know how big, but like something or big like the that. Foxconn factory yeah, is. Yeah. Exactly, like a small city in a small city in its in, within a city, basically, mm-hmm. or a big city within a even larger city. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if anything happens there, and we've seen, like, I mean, there's like COVID, and there's like other major disasters, and earthquakes can earthquakes can happen, and I mean, like the world anyway is crazy, like wars, all of that. If any of that happens, Apple has a problem. And we're seeing that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Supply chain and manufacturing is a, well, has been historically a very brittle system. Mm -hmm. As long as everything's okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it worked uh, well for for decades, I would say. More or less. I mean, small issues here and there. I mean, I remember the, what was it? The flooding in Thailand, I think, where like was it SSDs or something couldn't like hard drive something right. couldn't. Be. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean those were small blips. Like I mean, yeah, it, it had some influence, but there was it wasn't so bad that Apple couldn't produce anything. It might have been a more a little bit more expensive, it might have been a little bit harder, but Apple managed somehow and all the others managed. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, we've seen it's 
<laughs> at least the last couple of years, it's been very rocky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, this report to me is uh, indication that Apple has decided that they have they have to change mm -hmm. to have a more resilient supply and manufacturing chain. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, I mean, the question is how much is, of that is also political pressure. Okay. Yep. There's that too. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, next story here. Let's move on. Uh, the iPhone 14 Pro, its dynamic island requires a special manufacturing process from Samsung. <laughs> I did not realize this. The iPhone 14 series delivers the most significant screen redesign since the iPhone 10, and iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max have that pill-shaped cutout the top uh, next to the hole punch cutout. Apple merged the two by uh, keeping an OLED pixels between the two holes turned off, and that's how the dynamic island came to life. But manufacturing a display with two holes that needs to be drilled at the top isn't easy. And Apple had some Samsung develop a particular technology to manufacture the screens without damaging them. Um, it's interesting to see. I, I hadn't realized that there was there was a completely different manufacturing process than um, other than they just like we were just talking about with uh, the production of the iPhone. Why wouldn't uh, this be just a simple process in itself? But guess not because it's, it's <laughs> quite advanced technology right patrice <laughs> i mean it's not i mean you can't just go to to home depot get a drill no. and just drill a hole in your display it's not no. how it works. you can well it's, it's not gonna work should yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i think it was pretty clear that that is not an easy thing especially when it comes to like how apple wants things to work i mean they want basically every pixel they can to work as a normal pixel and I mean, for sure, you could just punch a hole in it and say, well, there's a bunch of that pixels and who cares? Um, but that's on Apple. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's probably why it took so long for Apple to do it, because they, they wanted to do it their way. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I assumed that for what we have on the iPhone right now, that it wasn't a difficult thing. Not because I was thinking, ah, you know, just take a hole puncher or drill and punch a hole through, but because we've had uh, Android phones on the market for a few years that are essentially doing the same thing. Where, you know, there's a hole through the screen for the cameras. And I figured since that was a process that these companies had been using for a while already, that uh, that it, it was... Uh, a process that wasn't going to take a lot of reworking. Well, turns out that's not the case. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just, I was just looking at it. Just look at how how tiny that hole even is and how is. like there's no margins whatsoever. So it's not one of those big hole punches that we've seen on Samsung phone. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, that's, yeah. It. that's probably easier and cheaper to do that. Um, but it's not Apple. No, it's funny. It's not Apple. There are some apps I, I like. I would watch a video on like Xfinity for for uh, like watch a show, and then I would I would go landscape, or you would actually see mm -hmm. the bar. Yet the bars actually you actually see the bar. So it, it, I think Xfinity needs to do a better job with their uh, <laughs> um, with their app app design there. But they'll get there. But uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's interesting uh, to see where that is. So. Um, last story here this week, and actually this has been an ongoing story is. Uh, Apple adds iOS 16.2's home app upgrade to its internal list of major issues. Apple has marked <laughs> iOS 16.2's home architecture as a major issue by adding it to an internal list of issues typically only reserved for widespread and noteworthy problems, uh, hmm. uh, indicating that the update has caused widespread and systematic issues to users' home kit devices and setup, do you think? Really? Uh, <laughs> As we know, earlier this month, they, they included an option for uh, users to update their phones to a new quote-unquote stable architecture. Uh, and, 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 and it's, of course, it turned out that uh, it really broke the home app completely, and there was, there was a workaround with a support article and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, this is was, this was from Mac Rumors. They did learn that Apple has had this uh, update to a database of both hardware and software in issues internally. So they got some work to do. And Jeff, you being the home kit 
guy, I should say, or the guru, whatever I want to call it. But uh, what you got some thoughts on here? I, I hope the guy didn't uh, mess up your uh, home home map. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so the the big problem a lot of people have complained about is uh, not being able to log in, right. and that is not a problem for me. Um, the problem that that I've had since in uh, doing the uh, the home kit update is that uh, my place has become basically a roulette game of what's actually going to happen and trigger and turn on or off when. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, like seriously, um, uh, I'll I'll tap a button in HomeKit to turn on the lights in my office, just mm-hmm. like, you know, like regular uh, white. Nothing will happen in the office, but the rest of the lights in the house will will all turn on, and it'll be a random color, like green. <laughs> and you know, so it's just completely random stuff like that that's happening. Or I'll, I'll say uh, I, I'm actually having more trouble with with uh, Siri commands with HomeKit mm-hmm. now too, where I'll I'll say something <laughs> like, "Hey, S lady." turn on the office lights yep <laughs> and literally every light in my place shuts off yeah well i have the opposite i i tell i tell her to turn off the office lights and i mean she does turn off the office lights and everything else in the office oh yep yep <laughs> uh i i have that too turn off the living room lights mm-hmm. and literally every device in the living room shuts off mm-hmm. yeah um yeah, I mean, it's, Apple it's had to had to transition because of Matter support. So I I get it, yeah. and I mean, it's not as if it was stable and good before. I mean, it's been it's been a mess for a long time, to be honest. Yeah, but now uh, it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess. Yeah, yeah it, so. it is. Yeah, it's getting better. I don't know. On the <clears throat> I'm on the beta, and it seems to be more stable, at least to me. And and I am not on the beta. Hmm. Yeah, so, it's yeah. It, it's still. I mean, I'm not going to say it's easy because I I use I like I want to say ten years ago I I wrote an app for a smart home system. It was a third party app for with an undocumented API and all of that. So it was a lot of fun, and it was it was incredibly hard because I mean you have to deal with devices not being reachable and whatever, like the network issues and all of that. Um, but it's Apple. They should be. Yeah. I mean, if, if anybody mm-hmm. can figure it out, if anybody has the talent in the world to do it, it should be them. One would think. Yeah, one would, would think, think, yeah. yeah. You would think. And there's other companies who are doing a much better job, to be honest. Agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's some of the devices you can't use it with home, uh, home mm. map. You have to use it with their, theirs. So, um, yeah, I don't buy it. those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it doesn't have matter or home kit or thread or something like that, I'm not going it. Yeah, I live and learn. I have the Google Nest doorbell. Mm. I'm kind of stuck. So, but <clears throat> you're not stuck. Least, Do you have a screwdriver? Yeah, I just pry <laughs> Get it off. Get the thing <laughs> off the front of your <laughs> exactly. house right now. <laughs> Replace it. Sell it. Yeah. Sell it to someone who who's who wants to have it, wants to buy it, and buy a new one. Yeah. No. Maybe next year. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and move on to the topics this week. Uh, beta this week. iOS sixteen point three beta one is still continuing uh, as we uh, record this this week. Uh, haven't seen anything else. Uh, uh, Patrice, with you being on beta, everything I'd, I'd mm-hmm. like to hear what how your experience has been so far with with some of the. Changes they made. Uh, there wasn't a lot of drastic changes between sixteen three and sixteen two. I don't rem- honestly. I, other than some stability thing, I don't even remember any any changes. To be honest, there really wasn't. No, uh, it's like I mean, they they put out a new beta. There's no like, it, it, there's nothing in there. You say okay, they had to do a new beta. I'm I'm suspecting that we will get something down the line. I mean, this is this is the this is probably the release for. February, March time frame. Yeah, so, so they're gonna hold I'm, off for a while. Yeah, I'm I'm guessing at least. Um and I mean there might be an event there and they might add something to it later. I mean it's yeah. 
<laughs> this is this has been Apple's thing for the last couple of years. Like basically release the, the new version, put out a new beta right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether they need yeah. it or not. Like whether there's any, as we see, whether there's yeah. anything, at least publicly anything in there. I mean, I should say publicly because, I mean, they might internally have changes that we don't see. Like whatever, maybe we get actually some changes to the home pods, for example, which haven't had any changes really in the last. We can live it forever. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's possible. I mean that uh, you know they they remove like they they put out a, a version or put like a beta version, but internally in their build process they remove code, and sometimes stuff leaks because someone forgot to to guard it properly. <laughs> Um, but usually, usually they're pretty good. Yeah. And Jeff, you just said your iPad just booted as we were, or we started the show. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in, in, uh, 16.2, my iPad started charging from a, from a low, lower power USB port. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, even when the screen was on and, uh, and I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. And with the 16.3 beta, that seems to either be intermittent or just not working at all. I haven't been able to figure it out yet. Um, but uh, like right before the show started, I noticed uh, the Apple logo suddenly popped up on that iPad screen. Hmm. And um, so at some point, it just drained mm. overnight. And uh, and had enough charge coincidentally right before the show to turn on. <laughs> it was only four oh, percent charge, but hey, you know it's enough for it to boot back up. Um, if, when it's turned off, it probably was enough power to to turn it to a point where it could boot up again, and then it's going to drain again. So, oh, that that's my assumption. <laughs> yep. Probably not the best idea to do that all the time. <laughs> well, it's an iPad that has a battery that's already shot. Oh, okay. Then it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> but it's not shot enough that Apple will uh, replace the battery. <laughs> Maybe Dad will do it. Just keep it charging for 4% and then go back down. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah. G- give me a couple hours. It'll, <laughs> it'll be ready for Apple to pop a new battery. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've been running it on my 10R that I use as a mm. camera, and uh, I haven't noticed anything. And I have an iPad Pro 12.9. iPad seems pretty pretty st- mm. pretty solid, so really haven't noticed much of a yeah. of a way here. So uh, one tip I can I can give people it's a little bit of a follow up because I mentioned that on on BTN I think when you have a older Apple TV in your house and you have threat devices and you all your all your threat devices are kind of sluggish. Go into the settings of your Apple TV and turn 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 off the what is it called? It's under Home and I and Cloud or something. I don't remember the, the exact menu, but it's basically turn off the feature that the Apple TV is your your home hub. If you have other devices in house like a HomePod Mini or something, because that was for me causing a lot of lag because the because the Apple TV doesn't have threat support. The old one doesn't. The new one actually does. Um, so, but it was for some reason, I think because it was closest to my, um, to my router, it was being used as a home hub. So it would always go to the Apple TV, realize, oh, it can't do thread and then go somewhere to another device and then turn on the or off the devices. So just turn that off. I mean, if you have a home, if you have a, a HomePod mini or a newer Apple TV in the house, you don't need the old Apple TV anyway. So like I had a newer Apple TV. Do you mean like a, a 4K? The no, the the brand new 4K, and I think only the Ethernet version has thread. Right? Okay. The 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 most expensive I I still don't get it, but the most expensive one. Um. So I said any any older so any older than that one, just turn it off. I mean, if you have a as I said, if you have another device in the house who who does that and can do the home hub functionality, just disable it. It's not needed. It was causing a lot of issues. And I just, I, when you unplug it, it started working. I'm like, huh, interesting. Then I, interesting. I, I realized that you can just turn off that feature and then it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I just tried it. It's, uh, you just go under the, um, in, in the settings under AirPlay and HomeKit. And oh, AirPlay a, and HomeKit, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can go down and just select Home Hub. I just went on my TV screen here and turned it on. <laughs> uh, and uh, 
Yeah, you can just t- toggle between connected yeah. and off. So. Yeah, just turn it yeah, off. Said, if you don't need it, just turn it off. It's not going to help you. And it, it said it was causing really some issues in the network. Yeah, I've I've kind of been into the Apple TV world for the last two weeks because I mm. I, I ended up getting an, a brand new one with Ethernet, uh, the, the 2022 model. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I have a 2021 model that I bought that was a deal because it was like 99 bucks. And then... <laughs> Start rotating them around the whole, uh, the, uh, the whole home because then mm-hmm. I have the 2017 uh, 4K. Then mm-hmm. I have the HD, which I moved over to our ho- our our lake home because uh, mm-hmm. they don't need to have the high technology like like I do, right? <laughs> so <laughs> right. Uh, and then you know, and then then fumbling around with remotes, and so yeah, I've mm-hmm. been uh, I've been kind of in the uh, Air T- Apple TV uh, world mm-hmm. the last couple of weeks, so. I think I'm uh, going to get one just for Apple TV thing. It so. was cheap because they were selling it at Sam's Club locally here in the United hmm. States. It was 139 bucks, and so they took like ten dollars off of the, uh, the the 128 with Ethernet. Okay, nice. Yeah. So then, then I think the one that was not uh, Ethernet was um, uh, like 129. I believe they were mm-hmm. selling it for. So I just started setting them up because we're going to do some signage stuff at work, and uh, mm-hmm. and so I saw, see what the difference is. I mean. The the new Apple TV is really lightweight. I mean, I I compared it to to the you know twenty twenty one model. It's they've really took some weight off of it, and uh, I, I should have added it to my review <laughs> by from last week. the 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 fan, right? I think that was yeah. the thing that they changed. <laughs> probably. I didn't even know it had a fan. That was the funny thing. Yeah, I, I probably should have mentioned that, well, mentioned that <laughs> last week when I did my review. Uh, so, but yeah, it's it's interesting <laughs> to not see an Ethernet connection on it. And I mean, I don't use it. I really should mm. uh, because it is nearby to. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, n- nearby to this so uh, but uh, it, it's definitely gonna be interesting here so i'll talk about there's a new, another new device i'm getting here i think it's arriving today but i'll, I'll mention it in a little <laughs> bit here but uh so let's talk about the year in review uh so apple did have only three events plus they had a press release in 2022 so that was a little unusual they usually had four events um so uh we we did uh see a lot of new things this past year and uh and i was uh I was happy with some things and kind of disappointed with others. So we'll, so we'll kind of go through each event briefly and then see what, what didn't stand, what stood out here. Uh, back in March on the 6th, they had an event called peak P E E K performance that announced the iPhone SE, the third generation and the, uh, uh, that was with the Apple I 15 bionic, bionic chip and the ceramic ceramic shield. And that had a base price of $429. They had also came out that was huge, huge release was the iPad Air fifth gen uh, mm-hmm. with the the Apple M1 chip, and of course they introduced center stage. I'm just, I mean, it's been interesting to see what everybody's been talking about with the iPhone SE. Um, some people love it, some people are like, oh god. I mean, I I grabbed one to try it, and I was like, why did I buy this? I'm turning it back because <laughs> I'm so used to having the, the, the you know the high end 14 Pro and Pro Max. So, uh, mm. but there are people out there who just want an inexpensive iPhone, and I think that's been <laughs> that's been the kind of the, the driver of it all mm-hmm. as far as why, <laughs> or, why it continues or, to be popular. So yeah. what, or what's people who don't have a choice. <laughs> I oh, got yeah. one. Mm-hmm. I'm actually right now oh, using for, it because it's my camera. I got one from work. They, okay. they were like, Oh, like uh, you, you don't need an iPhone 12, like or 13. Like just, just here's an SE. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's my you camera. I don't care. As long as the camera yeah. is decent, I don't care. <laughs> Never. Use that's it. like the second gen, right? Um, not a new one, the third gen. Oh, it's third gen, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got the, like, I got it right after because I waited and I was like, okay, like the, I had the second gen SE before, or was it a, no, it was a seven and I knew that this year it wouldn't get any updates anymore. So I was like, okay, hey guys, I need a new work phone <laughs> yeah. because <laughs> security and stuff. And they were like, oh yeah, here's an SE. I'm like, okay. And it was a new yeah. SE. So oh, was it's good. a perfectly good iPhone. I mean, it, it, it does have a small it? screen. I'm so I, I never use so it. my large camera. Screen, so. So. <laughs> I yeah, never yeah. use it. So yeah, 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 yeah. And and I do know people that uh, that are buying the new SE for their aging parents. Yes, uh-huh. I think yeah. you just put the accessibility and zoom everything up to giant. Uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> but and, then yeah. for that. A bigger phone would be better. Like a, I, I, I agree. <laughs> like but, a you know, if, if it's it, if you're buying it for someone, <clears throat> excuse me, where they want to have some of the smartphone features, mm. but 
you're not in a position where you can spend a lot of money. Right. Uh, it, it's a great option. And yeah. well, like in some cases, they're buying the SE so that there's a companion phone to go with the brand new Apple Watch they're buying mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's more about the Apple Watch. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. it's the a old... kid's phone, like for your mm-hmm. oh, yeah. whatever, the, eight, nine, ten that's year a, actually, old. Yeah. That's a great example of, you know, mm-hmm. the young teenage kids and then mm-hmm. the, the, the parents want to buy them a phone, iPhone. They, I mean, a lot of them dabble in the used market, but why why do that when you can get a new mm-hmm. SE? It's a perfectly perfectly good phone. I see these kids. They have no problems, the young kids. <laughs> they have some young kids these days. Or, 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 or <laughs> have no problems doing perfect their TikTok. Eyesight, and, all, usually, yeah. and, and, right. and small thumb, thumbs, like, totally yeah. fine. So, I mean, e- even my mother-in-law <laughs> had a, an iPhone 8 Plus, and she, we, we gave mm-hmm. her an, an iPhone 11 11, 11 Pro, uh, 11 Pro probably. And, you know, the screen is not that much different in size if you compare the 8 Plus because that was a, you know, with the frame and everything. So, mm-hmm. but, uh, but yeah, but it's, it's the same thing in that case. So, but the iPad Air, I think, was a huge, huge uh, leap uh, mm-hmm. in the mid, mm-hmm. midline market. I think Apple did it, knocked it out of the park with that model. And that's the yeah. one I would always recommend to everybody who's yeah. looking for a, a good iPad and doesn't want to spend the 800 to $1,000 for a Pro. Yeah. They can jump right into this iPad Air for under you know, like six hundred bucks, I think it is, and sometimes lower. I thought I thought I got one of the Airs, but I don't remember. I don't even remember that it has center stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they. Had, uh, never I, 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 I don't. I don't use it. Um, mm. One of one of our friends on the Mac Voices Live, Eric, he he uh, he uses his iPad every week when we're on the show, and it's always kind of weird to see he's moving and the camera's <laughs> moving along with him. I mean, it, it is kind of cool that it does that. Uh, and the iPad, that's got a great, great camera too. So, mm-hmm. um, so good stuff on, the, on that event. Uh, so we're, we're kind of happy with what that was, what was announced. And then WWDC happened in June, as as always. They they come out with the new OS, is uh, which was iOS 16, iPad OS 16. TV OS, watch OS, and uh, Mac OS uh, Ventura came was was announced and. Uh, but but uh, go, Dave, go before we go into WWDC, there is one other big announcement that was in the March event, and that was the Studio Display and the Mac Studio. That's true. Okay, that yeah. was oh, and that was probably a big one, probably one of the biggest ones this year. I mean, Mac the, the Studio Display. Depends on what you're using it for. Some people love it. Some people say, "Okay, the camera is crap." Um, but it, yeah, that was a big, a big thing. That was, I think, the whole thing why they even did that event. Like, I mean, yeah, the iPad Air is fine. The SE is fine. Yeah, but I mean, the performance part was the the Mac Studio. Oh no, no question. And that that was always that was they were selling it pretty well. I mean, I think stock was very. Mm-hmm. minimal and that display is phenomenal it's just a little out of my league as far as, uh, <laughs> as price goes but um but i've seen it in person and mm-hmm. it is really cool and they got, it's got a really amazing camera um and i'm <laughs> comparing it to like dell's you know they got i i set up a dell 34 inch on a desk and and it's got the built-in camera but it pops up you you click click and it and, and oh, it's like one of those phones with the camera yeah that pops up. yeah it's all it's awful <laughs> the camera is just awful um uh, but yeah but the I studio mean, display the, camera isn't that much better no no it's, <laughs> it's not yeah so no. it's just <laughs> i don't know anyone that and now granted we have a self-selecting group of people mm-hmm. that that are into these devices <laughs> that said i don't know anyone that likes the cameras on these displays but i know people that love the displays mm-hmm and uh, and actually, everyone I know that has one of the displays flat out loves it, except for the camera. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I even know people that have gone to from you know like a thirty four inch wide display to one of the studio displays because they love the quality so much they're okay not having that that extra wide screen. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful display. Oh, it is. It is probably in. I mean, within the the price bracket and the size, the best display you can buy. I don't think there is. Any, I mean, you can spend more and get a better display. Sure, like get the what was it called? The the other one from Apple. I always forget the name. It's Pro Display XDR, something like that. 
Oh yeah, the pro display. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I mean, get that one, and there's a thousand bucks. Bunch. Uh, no, uh, uh, five thousand. Five thousand bucks. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> and there's probably others. Substantially cheaper than comparable <laughs> displays. Um, yeah, and there's probably others that you can get that are the same or more. Um, but within mm-hmm. that price bracket, price bracket, I don't think there is anything else. I mean, there's the LG. Um, what was it called? Ultra Fine. Is that the one? Is that, is that's the one that Apple used to sell on their stores, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's about, I mean, it's similar-ish, I would say. It's sure not from Apple, but it's about about the same price and about the same specs, roughly. So, but as I said, I think this is the best you can get if you're willing, if you're in the market for something in that in that price range and in that quality range. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's go ahead and move into WW. We were talking about WWDC mm-hmm. just briefly. We get to hit CarPlay had some updates. We'll talk about CarPlay and um, the future stuff. Um, HomeKit had some updates. We already spent a lot of time on HomeKit mm-hmm. as it is anyway, <laughs> so you know where that's at. And they added some more, more parental controls. So and two hardware announcements. What, uh, right, they're Max, right? Yeah, yeah. There was the what was it? A 13-inch MacBook Air and the new M2 13-inch MacBook Pro. Which right. is also unusual for WWDC. I mean, not completely, but it's not. It doesn't happen. It's all not the time. norm. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. that was kind of strange that though they announced those. Um, so, um, but overall, yeah, the two events were mm-hmm. they were good, not the mm-hmm. earth shattering. <laughs> uh, but then the third event came on September seventh, which we always looked forward to because of the, the iPhone, <laughs> and we know <laughs> that the Christmas. iPhones are yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so. The third event was on September 7th, and it was entitled Far Out. And uh, and what they did was they introduced the Watch Series 8, which I know Jeff purchased one this year, mm-hmm. and uh, the second generation Apple Watch SE and the Apple Watch Ultra, which was the big, big uh, mm-hmm. announcement uh, that, that came out. Uh, but we also included the AirPods Pro second gen, which I'm sporting, and I'm really loving them. Um, they, other than when they cut out sometimes at Zoom, which I'm still trying to figure out. Uh and then we have the iPhone 14 series, 14, 14 plus, 14 Pro, and 14 Pro Max. Uh, they all have the H2 processor in the AirPods Pro, then the A16 uh, only in the iPad Pro. I mean, I, iPad, mm-hmm. uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max. Um, I think you and I both, Patrice, got the 14, 14 mm-hmm. Pro Max. We love it. I mean, mm-hmm. after, so it's been a few <laughs> months since we've had it. What, what are you? I mean, I'm super happy with it. It's been working really well for me. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm super happy with it too. I mean, I can't use the the let's say highlight feature that is uh, emergency SOS because it's not in Austria yet. I mean, they right. actually rolled it out recently to parts of Europe. So if you're traveling to Europe from the US now, you can also get emergency services here, uh, but not in Austria yet. Um, but I'm I mean, other than the colors, which I'm still sorry about. I'm sorry, Apple. Uh, all the colors are gray. I'm I mean. Yeah. <laughs> It can Even barely purple, see right? it's purple. Like we I have, have the purple, purple yeah. <laughs> which should be, I mean, it was the only fun color they supposedly had and all of the colors are gray. Like on the pro, on the pro phones, I should say. The the normal phones, I think they had fun, more fun colors. So a little bit. Of I this. don't know why they do it that way. It's, I mean, sure. I, I can get someone saying, well, you know, these are pro phones. Therefore mm-hmm. we need to have more, uh, uh, yeah subdued colors at the same oh. time <laughs> how many people are using pro devices in pro situations where they would prefer to have something brighter or more fun or with a deeper yeah. richer color i mean get do i mean do the the gray and uh, whatever it is the silver and and the base gray or whatever and then do the rest of the line with fun colors like i mean you can have two right. let's say boring or more corporate or whatever you want to call it colors and then do fun colors for the rest of the line it's not as if you're not releasing what is it five colors anyway right yeah. right yeah just because you have a, a bright pink phone doesn't yeah. make i would love the, that <laughs> see see but yeah that wouldn't make the space gray or silver phone less professional looking Mm-mm. It wouldn't make the pink phone less professional looking, to be honest. But I, it's my I personal agree. opinion. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, people put, I mean, for that reason, people put cases on their phones because they're like, okay, I don't like gray. I want pink or orange or green or whatever your color is. Right. Um, and, and I don't like that. Like, I, I, like Apple's phones are beautiful as they are, but the colors, I mean, I, I, I like, I know for a lot of people, that's the least important thing about a phone, but for me, it is kind of important. It's, it's, I look at it all day and I'm like, I like, I wish it was more purple or more pink or whatever, like, just mm -hmm. more. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, it's a cool phone. Like, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. Let me go, go off a little side tracker. I missed uh, the chat that's going on here on, on youtube.com slash in touch with iOS. We got Ben in the in the chat here giving up yes. some great stuff and I missed. Uh, I think uh, he asked you, Patrice, if uh, if the SE has uh, MagSafe. I, does, I think it, it does, does not. No. Nope. does not. There you go. Nope. So it does not have the... Uh, it does not have... It is the old design, like home button, everything. Like it has the old single lens camera. It, like it's literally the old design. They just put new internals in. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, Mike Potter's in the in the chat here. How you doing, Mike? Uh, he uh, he agrees with you, Patrice. The little Mac Studio was a huge announcement this mm -hmm. year. And then, um, mm -hmm. uh, a, a couple other things here. It's still. Definitely, uh, definitely going to be a, a good year next year. A uh, couple other comments here, and uh, Ben Ben says it'll be uh, SOS will be in Austria <laughs> in uh, twenty twenty seven. Um, <laughs> so, no, it's probably next year. I mean, if yeah, it's I, like once it's in Germany, you know, once it's in Germany, it's in, like Austria is not that far. So <laughs> yeah, so but uh, want to get that caught up in in the chat comments. Thanks for everybody mm -hmm. for those comments. Thank you. Um, and yeah, and uh, so, so uh, I think we're. Uh, in the Apple Watch, I think uh, we got uh, some good things. How much we talked about? You listen back to previous episodes. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Jeff, you're happy with the watch series that you went went from the series five, right? Or series I went four. from the series four to right. the eight. Yeah, so that was yeah. a big jump. That was a big jump. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I tried on the with it. Okay. Uh, here's the interesting thing, though. If you told me I was wearing a series four, I would believe you. Yeah. Because because everything works just as well and reliably on the four yeah. as on the eight. Yep. And I and I stay yeah. with the seven. So I'm. So, I mean, but, and, and there, I'm there are definitely that it, a lot of features they got. I mean, there there yes, there are new features. So I'd mm -hmm. have to go looking and and, yeah. and see the things on the watch that that weren't on the four. So I'm not saying that as a slam to the eight. It's it's actually a compliment to the uh, the build quality and functionality of the devices Apple makes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. th they look the same, and they're both incredibly reliable. I just have to go looking to find what features are are different. Yeah. I yeah. mean, to be, to be fair, I don't think Apple has upgraded the chip in the Apple Watch in I want to say two years. No, I think it's still the same as something chip that it was is in it S8, six. I think, yeah, which for me is still an upgrade since I came mm -hmm. from the four. Yeah, yeah, I upgraded from the six to the eight, and I'm definitely noticing the the like it, it is a little bit better in in every way. Um, for me, mostly it was about the health features. So, oh yeah, that made sense. I'm with you. Yep, I agree. Um. So uh, I, I did try on the, uh, the the Apple Watch Ultra at the Apple Store. It's an absolutely beautiful watch, but yeah, it's pretty hard to justify eight hundred bucks <laughs> for, <laughs> it's a, a for a watch. watch. But it, for me, it's... being a big guy, I I think I would look mm -hmm. great with it. it. It looked really nice on my wrist. I took a picture of it, of course. Yeah. Having uh, and... yeah, having seen a bunch of women wearing it, I don't think it is as big as people made it out to be. Yeah. It is sure seen... bigger. Yeah, I just seen it. it is sure bigger. Like, I mean, no doubt about that. But it's not that much bigger that you couldn't wear it. I think it's just a matter of. So I think that alleviated some of the oh, it's too big thing for me. Um, but I still don't need it. Like that, that, that's the big thing. Like I just like I if if I needed it, I would gladly spend the eight hundred bucks. It's not that much more, but yeah. it's 
it doesn't have any features that I personally it doesn't make it a bad watch. It just makes no. it a watch that I don't need. Exact same with me. I mean, just I'm not going to be doing any diving anytime soon. And, <laughs> um, yeah. No, so, I'm not no. climbing. I mean, I'm climbing up mountains, but not that like not that that way. <laughs> it's like a small hike. Um, it, I'm not diving. I'm not doing any of the of the things. So for for me, it it, it is too big. But I could justify wearing a watch that's too big when I'm doing stuff in the backcountry. Mm-hmm. The problem that I have with the with the Ultra is that it's still a day hike watch, mm-hmm. and uh, and at that point, if if I'm going to take an Apple Watch into the backcountry and expect to use it for more than just a day hike, that means I need to take something to charge it. So right. the extra weight is going to come in a charger, but mm-hmm. but ultimately it means when I go in the backcountry and it's more than just like a afternoon or, or day hike thing, my Apple Watch isn't going with me because it's it's worthless at that point. And if you're doing a day hike, to be honest, the normal Apple Watch is doing like gang exactly. process. I've done it does that. Everything like that I eight, need. six, eight hour trips, hikes, whatever, not a problem. I didn't even I had a charger with me, but I didn't even need it. Yeah, it's yeah for yeah. for real world use for me. The ultra isn't going to give me anything more than my what is it forty one millimeter series mm-hmm. eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got I got the forty five, and I mean the the crazy thing for me is the I mean I I use it all day. Like I'm do sleep tracking. I only charge it in the morning. There's two things that are really important for me for that: the fast charging which is awesome, like whatever, half an hour. And mm-hmm. the battery life in the morning, like after basically a full day, it still has 35 to 40%. And I've used it for like running around and exercising and all of it all day. Like it's not mm-hmm. that I'm sitting at home doing nothing. So. Yeah. All right. Um, and let's briefly just talk about uh, the press events. We had these... Uh, the sixth generation iPad Pro with an M2 chip, mm-hmm. uh, 10th generation mm-hmm. iPad with the A14 Bionic chip, the mm-hmm. Magic uh, Keyboard Folio and, uh, for the iPad, and the third generation Apple TV, which we already talked about. Um, those all came <laughs> out. Um, iPad to 10th gen, a lot of be- lot of lot of bitterness to the fact it still has Lightning. <laughs> they, they, they uh, and and it is it is slower than, than a lot of the other older gen uh, iPads. And much and more money, so I've I've taken a look at that iPad and yeah, it's I, I saw them bringing down the prices, you know, for their Christmas holidays and uh, Black Friday and such. But uh, yeah, it's uh, they they did the jump the price up that pretty pretty well because you know you could buy the ninth gen was like the lowest price at two ninety nine or two fifty nine. Um, so, uh, but it's also older gen, slower processor, um, quite a slow, quite a bit slower than. <laughs> This gen, but, but it comes in fun colors. But it does come in fun colors. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> see, see, that's what I don't get. Like it does actually come in fun colors, like pink and yellow and so on. Like, yeah. <laughs> so Apple can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. My, it's my almost take... like there's two different people in charge of it. There's the guy who does, or the or the girl who does fun colors, and there's the guy or girl who does uh, like the <laughs> non-fun colors. And depending who gets which device that time, you get like a fun color or not. Yeah. Which, which shift um, that comes through? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, I need to correct myself. Thanks for Ben in the chat. It, uh, the 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 tenth one does have a USB C. I'm I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So that that was the big thing that they did. Change, oh. which was yeah, good. and they changed the design. I mean, yeah. the the tenth gen actually it it wasn't a yeah. radical redesign, but it was a, a change. It was actually a bigger change than it the was iPad modernized. Pro. Which, yeah, the iPad Pro didn't change at all, basically. Yeah, and like yeah, moving the camera to uh, landscape mode as mm-hmm. opposed to portrait mode. Uh, now, see, that's huge right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it shows how Apple can uh, engineer themselves into corners because you know everyone's like, why didn't they do this on the new iPad Pro? Well, they can't because they have to have this, that same space for the uh, charging mm-hmm. uh, magnet system for the Apple Pencil. 
Oh, and that also explains why the iPad Air. See, I I do right. I do remember. I, I thought that my iPad didn't have center stage, and it doesn't because it has the second gen second gen uh, Apple Pencil with a charge on top. So the iPad Air can't actually can't have center stage. You mean the iPad 10th gen? No, the the iPad Air. We talked earlier about the iPad Air and center center stage. Oh right, and I thought I thought I'm I, I don't have it, and I think it right. doesn't because it has the it has the Apple pencil on top, and then it can't. It does do that. support the, the the second gen, right? Whereas yeah, exactly. Then it can't have center stage because the the camera would be off uh, off to the side. Yeah, would have to check absolutely. that. Yeah. Um. Okay, I mean, again, we talked about. Apple TV, so we can move on from there. Uh, briefly, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, in memorandum some of the f- products that were re- re- were retired in 2022. The Apple Watch Series Three, you know, say la vie, <laughs> you can't upgrade it anymore. And I know Mike, you're in the chat there. You you're still sporting that Series Three. That's great. Uh, I hope it still works for you. And for you say it meets what you need. That's great. Um, but. Yeah, it, it can't be upgraded, and you always have to erase it and reinstall every time because there's no Ouch. space on that. Yeah, every time there's a, was, there was an upgrade, well, you're you're end of the road now with the upgrade. So, but hey, if it still if it still works, it, it works uh, for you, then that's great. I mean, I think that's uh, that that's awesome. Um, and uh, there were uh, the iPhone 11, which was not surprising because we got the 12 and the 13. Uh, Talked about the Apple TV HD. It was it was it was it was introduced in 2015, so it, it had a good life. So you know, there was no sense in that uh, staying in. The saddest of them all, I think, is the iPod Touch, in my opinion, because uh, I wish they would have been updating that. But I understand that you know iPods are a thing of the past now. Uh, <laughs> you can do everything on your iPhone. You can do it on any other device. But what's the point of having an iPod Touch? But it, mm-hmm. it was a nice to have people who don't want a phone, didn't want an iPhone. You know, I mean, no surprise. Right. I, no, not surprised. Surprised. no, I'm not surprised. No. At all. I, I'm <laughs> like, not surprised, I'm a, but still, um, yeah. I, I still see a valid use case for the iPod touch. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, if you want something that's smaller than a tablet, but still is like a tablet, uh, you know, it's, it's a pocket sized tablet and, uh, and it's great for kids. Yeah. Uh, if you mm-hmm. want, if you want them to have Restaurant. access to the software, but yeah, w- without mm-hmm. the, um, without the phone part. Um, and I, j- my iPod touch is now sitting in my old devices box yeah. and, uh, and I still used that thing up until mm-hmm. well, fairly recently, but mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's out of date enough now that, it just doesn't make sense, but I would have loved to have seen uh, an iPod Touch with a little bit bigger screen and uh, and USB C and just it would have been great. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean I saw the iPod Touch a lot as point of sale systems. Like if point they weren't using systems, iPad yes. Minis, like which is the other option, a little bit bigger. Um, but especially in restaurants, they would use it. They yes. can type in whatever the order is and send it out. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, in the chat, someone is saying iPhone SE minus the SIM is an iPod Touch. Well, yes and no. I mean, the, <laughs> the thing is, I don't think you can activate a, a, a phone without a SIM. So I think you still, I might be wrong about that. Now, you, you can use the iPhone without a SIM. Yeah, sure. At, Once it's activated. What well, um I think the initial I mean it used to be maybe I'm I'm again wrong because I was also wrong about center stage by the way. Um you know but maybe I, I, it used to, to be that you needed a sim to activate the phone. Like after that, once it was activated, you didn't need the sim. Like you can just turn like remove it. Maybe that changed with the Apple SIM or with the e sims. Maybe a good I'm wrong. Question. But yeah, um also if you use an iPhone SE without okay. a SIM, hmm. you're paying more theoretically than you would for an iPod Touch because for sure, yes. you're paying right. for a device that has all of the the cellular elements in mm-hmm. it as well. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, you can activate, it's not a problem. Okay, so that changed, that's good. Yeah, then, I mean, then there's probably even less of a reason for the SE to, uh, for the SE, for the, for the, for the touch. iPod touch to be around. There's also not very much of a reason for the SE to be around, but <laughs> that's a separate story. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for all the, the input in the, in the chat mm-hmm. room, Mike and, and Ben, we appreciate, appreciate that. Um, so let's uh, go to 2023. What uh, what do we ca- see as far as what can we predict what's going to happen next year? We have some pretty good ideas, you know. Um, I was going <laughs> to start off. There, yeah, I mean, I, I, we know for sure that Apple's going to launch some sort of all new CarPlay experience in 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're going to have to have a new car to do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I just hope that they don't focus all on that. And then all, all of us who keep our cars, you know, I mean, average, average age of a car is, I think, 12 years old in the United States. So, and it's growing. People, and it's growing because mm-hmm. people just don't want to have the, increasing, the expense say. of a yeah. whole new car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, this is all cool and stuff. I'd love to have it. <laughs> I, I wish they could retrofit it, but you can't because you don't have the, the cars do not have the equipment to do it, but mm. it's definitely going to be something in the future. It's going to take for a company to make a, a replacement dashboard for cars that yeah. has all the stuff in it. That'd be, I mean, that'd it be would awesome. be, it would be ridiculously expensive, right? But We're there are doing. people that would be like, yep, I'm throwing down money on that today. And then you take yeah. your car in and mm-hmm. you're, and oh, there's so many shop, so many nightmares. Replaces the I whole dashboard, and I won't even change my head unit because um, because it controls all the other stuff like the heat and the and all the other controls, and you know it's pretty pretty well integrated with the car. So I mean, I I was even I thought of it in my old my old car, but because it didn't have CarPlay, but at least this one does, so I'm I'm good. But yeah, it's. That's going to be some serious money. I, I don't. I doubt that that's going to happen. But you're, as you're seeing, I have an article here that it's going to be all high end cars to start off with, anyway. Yeah. I mean, and, but and where there's a market, there, there is someone who will do it. Yeah, so, someone yeah, oh. will do it. Oh, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, and um, actually, what would be interesting is to see it happen in 2023, <laughs> um, yeah. because. Apple making this available in 2023 really means that it's 2024 before we see cars that that are shipping with it. Correct. So someone could, in theory, retrofit an older car in 2023 to have the new car play before new cars have it. Yeah. Um, well, it depends on when Apple even activates it. True. Oh, um, yeah. yep. Good point. Uh, good point. Thanks for taking the wind out of that sail. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been it would have been cool, but no. Yeah, I think um, you're right. So we'll see what happens. Uh other thing is the home pod, what's gonna happen uh next year. There's been a rumor since since the home pod, original home pod was discontinued in twenty twenty one that they may bring it back. Uh I just you know Mark Erman had, had said something back in twenty twenty that they are working on something. And then you had uh, Ming Ko that was also saying that there's going to be a new design and a new HomePod could have a display. So there's a lot of rumor when it comes to the yeah. HomePod, uh, the full HomePod, um, as well as uh, updated HomePod Minis, which that's possible. I could see that mm-hmm. happening. More more colors, mm-hmm. maybe yeah. some updates, and then an Apple TV HomePod hybrid. Hmm, that's that's yeah. been chatty for a while. <laughs> I'll believe iPad, it. I see it. Uh, Apple TV and HomePod hybrid, I meant, and then Apple and then iPad and HomePod hybrid. That would be bizarre. <laughs> I don't see. Yeah, that's that, that's. A, I think that's a little dreamy. Hmm. Um, but I I could and, see and, a HomePod sound bar before any of those other things. Yeah, yeah. Is it? I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, a HomePod Mini update, very likely. Mm-hmm. For I mean, for no other reason. <laughs> then that Apple probably at some point wants to replace the chips in it because it's getting harder and harder to produce them. And so they might just, I mean, they've, that's why they did the, uh, the, the 4K Apple TV. Like right. it, It's mostly okay that the, the old chips are getting too hard and too expensive to produce again. So let's just throw in some older some older gen chips that are cheaper to produce. That's mostly their, their reasoning. And I think they're going to do that with the HomePod. Uh, yeah, other than the, that, the OG HomePod. Yeah, that, that's not coming back. No, I don't think so. 
Yeah, I, 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 simply, I simply don't see any market or any reason for it. Like for no, the HomePod no. itself, for the small, for the mini, yeah, sure, that's a cool, it's a cool device, it's a cool market, but I don't see anything beyond it. And I think the, I mean, with the exception of Sonos, which is, it, I think, its own thing almost uh, from a from a market yeah. perspective, I don't see anybody else being successful with it. Yeah, it's expensive. That's yeah. the thing. Those mm-hmm. speakers are expensive. So, a um, couple of things we'll talk here. Uh, I think Apple is going to be is reportedly is seriously concerned concerned about the iPhone 14 Plus sales. Uh, so. Could this affect next year's decisions, which they've already probably made at this point, about the next phone, which will probably probably more than likely be an iPhone 15? Um, they're talking about the pricing, you know, because the 14 plus nice phone and all, and it was, I was excited when they announced it because there's so many people who want quote unquote a, quote unquote a lower price uh, for uh, with a larger size screen, but. It really isn't much. I mean, like you're talking about a two hundred dollar difference between that model and the Pro. So, I'm interested yeah. to see what happens in next year. What what Apple decides? Because I think they have a boatload of stock on that 14 uh, Plus right now. I I think? I think what they really have is a supply chain issue. Yeah. yeah, and I think that their sales problem is not because people don't want to buy the phone; it's that they're just not available. The 14 plus and the 14 were, were, were I think, readily available. Yeah, and I think that's oh, that's Apple's pr- 14 but, plus. I, yeah. I'm sorry, I misheard you. I yeah. was thinking okay. 14 Pro. Okay, no, the plus. But, I'm sorry. but even even yeah. there, I, I mean, that might still be a supply chain issue. I mean, the the differences between the Pro and the non Pro models are big enough that like there are other chips in there, and you don't know. Like it might just be that one of the chips is harder to get. Um, it's probably, I mean, it is very likely more like it's harder to produce the 14 pro in general, like just more features and all the, like all the extra stuff that it has. Um, will it influence the decision next year? Uh, yes. And only if it is okay, how many 15 pros do we produce versus 15 non pros? I'm pretty sure that that is. Other than that, I think that the number of phones they're producing on any of them, like any any one, yep. is so big that it doesn't matter. Yeah, and um, on the supply chain side, I think looking at this year and saying, "Oh, Apple's having trouble with uh, with phone sales," <laughs> is uh, is not uh, right. Because this is a year where where supply chains have been especially difficult, mm-hmm. and uh, and so the real test is what happens when Apple can actually get the parts to manufacture the phones in the quantities that they want, and then what do they have left over afterwards? Yeah. And, and I mean, there's there's one other factor. So far, there has been I mean, there has been an impact of. Um, like the financial, I don't want to call it a financial crisis, but like everything that happened this year, like mm-hmm. the wars and so on. Um, and I, I, it has so far not you, I mean, it has impacted the, how people buy, like the, the, the buying behavior, but not as much as people thought. Whether that changed or not, that stays that way until next year is, is a big question. Mm-hmm. Like at some point, People will have to make a decision saying, okay, I'm not buying a new phone because I'm I'm struggling to pay rent or energy p- bills or whatever. I said so far right. it hasn't been seemed to be a massive problem for Apple, I should say. Um, but it, it's coming. Yeah, yeah I maybe. would like to see data on What's the percentage of people that want to get a new iPhone when it comes out versus how many of them uh, end up not being able to get it right away? And like this year, um, you know, we're, we're what months into Mm -hmm. the release cycle and how many people at that point are like, screw it. I'll just wait until next year. Yeah, I don't think. Um, I think most people don't think that way. 
What's that? I think it, the the influence of of the financials right now are probably like your personal financials are probably bigger than supply chain. I I can see where that would be a a yeah. huge factor. Yeah, I mean they've lost sales in in like basically Russia. Um, I think in China there's been some struggles and so on. Um, so yeah. We'll I, I'm betting there's a lot of people in the UK right now mm -hmm. that uh, that previously would have uh, jumped on a new iPhone, and right now, like you were saying, it's like oh, got to pay my yeah. heating bill, which mm -hmm. now is the same as my mortgage. Yeah, yep. yeah, totally. And I think, I mean, as I said, we haven't seen that yet, and that's why Apple has. So maybe they expected like everything to be more impacted by that maybe they expected because of everything that was happening that people would maybe not buy the pro and go for the for the like the non-pro version and say ah it's good enough mm -hmm. uh, because it is a good phone like yep let's face it mm -hmm. um so maybe that that's what happened we don't know but uh, said we'll see how that how that turns out next year yeah definitely will be um then the last thing i want to talk just touch on a little bit here is wearables uh, two notable is uh the airpods max haven't been updated in over it's got, got close to was it two years three years i think mm -hmm. um uh that that's long has overdue. it really been that long it has yeah <laughs> wow wow <laughs> yeah so it i don't know where you Apple's how un ready they are <laughs> yeah i mean it just i don't know where apple is with that because I mean, I, I think pricing was starting to come down. You're starting to see people do some deep discounts on it because it was pretty high priced. I mean, five hundred dollars for a headset. I mean, I know it was it was it was a good, really good sounding. I tried them, mm -hmm. and, um, but I don't know how, how that case. market's been. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that uh, case. Yeah. Oh yeah, the bra. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, crazy, crazy case there. But um, hard to say where that's going to go because you know just. Just like uh, other things Apple's done similar to that. Then, you know, they've gone a few years without doing any upgrades. I mean, the AirPods took a while to get upgraded too. So, I mean, the, even the Pros were, you know, at least, yeah, there were three years, I think, before the Pros, the Pro 2s came out. So, I'm looking at AirPods Max on Apple's website right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you can't get anything right now. It's all. They're all sold out. Yeah, it's like weeks out for yeah. Um, yeah, so like uh, space gray, you're waiting five weeks. Silver, yeah. you're waiting four weeks. Green, that's the one that that you can get in one to two weeks. Hmm. But uh, uh, or the blue, um, yeah, pink is more popular because that's uh, three weeks. But still, that that actually surprises me. We're three mm -hmm. years into this product, and uh, and if I order off the Apple website, I have to wait weeks to get a pair right. of uh, of their headphones. And I don't think that's a supply chain thing, because I mean it's not as if you can just not produce uh, AirPods right. Max and then produce more iPhones. That's not how it works. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that either means they've stopped producing them. Maybe there's an update coming. I mean, there's supposedly an Apple event in March. Yeah, we'll see. So could could mean that it's due. Um, one last prediction of wearables is the continuous rumors about the AR headset. Is is that going to come? Think you guys think that's going to happen next year? I I think Apple will give us a developer kit. Now, <laughs> uh, and and so that'll be a WWDC thing. My right. guess, and if and, and maybe we'll see a shipping uh, product next year, or it might be the whole rest of the year is just for developers, and then it'll be like spring twenty twenty four when yep. Apple rolls out their uh, their actual consumer product. I made a prediction, I think last year. I think it was last year um, that I said like end of like probably September twenty twenty three or like fall 2023 we'll get the the release or the announcement and maybe a developer kit or something um and then like spring 24 summer 24 we'll get we'll get the actual product kind of like the apple watch i mean we got it yeah. that way yeah yeah absolutely um 
So that's a lot of predictions and and, and uh, review of all the things that happened this past year. That it was a pretty eventful year. Um, I wanted to close with a, a happy Christmas gift that I got this year, and I was pretty happy about. And I have it here to my side here. I think this is really cool. Is this frame? This is Aww. one of those things. Those are so grid. cool. Those are so They're cool. Super cool. Uh, I have a link in the show notes so you can check it out. Got this as a nice gift. Uh, Which one is that? 4S? This is the, this is the 4S. I wow. thought, it's that's one of my fine. favorite phones. <laughs> yeah, I love this phone. I mm-hmm. I, I remember, remember the story. But it, I mean, it's just so well built. It's, this frame is really nice. It's not mm-hmm. really uh, nice. It's, it, and then they put a lot into it. Even the information that's on the on the board, so it's gonna it's you know gonna look really nice on on, on your wall. Um, I remember the 4S vividly because I bought it and I was, uh, of course, uh, doing stuff for the app, my uh, Mac user group in, back in those days. And um, I get out of my car and I drop it because I was supposed to do an iPhone special oh, interest group. No. <laughs> so so then my, my wife was with me and I said, oh, can you, you got to run to the Apple store. They got to replace this because the, you know, because the, the 4S, that, that, the back was all glass. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I went flat down and it completely shattered. They took it back and they, they swapped it. Yeah. I think that was the only phone I ever broke it was the 4S and I dropped it on concrete and the back yeah. shattered. It completely shattered. So, mm-hmm. uh, needless to say, I wanted to use it for, for demo <laughs> for that special <laughs> interest group and I, I luckily had some extra time, so we, we could, she was able to do that for me. I love her; she was great doing that. <laughs> um, so, but a nice Christmas present. I'll go to their website. I have a link in the show notes here. I think it's a really cool thing to. That's uh, very cool. And they got other iPhones that you can do as well. I mean, they just, I guess, released the the first gen iPhone. Pricey. They're going to charge about four hundred dollars for it um, for a framed iPhone first gen from two thousand seven, but. Uh, <laughs> You can get any iPhone and be happy with this. I don't care which model it is. I own pretty much all of them anyway, so mm-hmm. <laughs> except for the first gen. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it's great stuff. And uh, with that, this is uh, the last show of 2022. I can't believe we've brought it to a close here. And um, I'm looking forward to great things in 2023. Mm-hmm. And looks like we've, like I said, we've we've made this a tradition. I think we have to continue this on <laughs> here next we year do. Uh, and, and the 2022. Already looking forward to it. Yeah, you know, we got to put it on the calendar ahead of time here. So I, I, <laughs> I, I, I guess we, I, I didn't even realize it. I'm glad we did it and I'm glad we're doing it. So, uh, program, programming note, there will not be a show next week because uh, I will be attending the CES and that's coming up very, very shortly as a record. Oh, that's this still program. going. It's still going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll bring a few masks. Um, but, uh, yeah. so I'll take a week off and, you know, Chuck Joyner and Mac Voices Live will be dark as well because he's going as well. So then uh, the following week was well I had our first show of 2023 and I have plenty to probably talk about when it comes to the new new tech and all kinds of other stuff with Apple News. So and, uh, just, and I wish both of you happy holidays, happy new year and Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you had a great Christmas and uh, thanks for listening. This is a, I'm so so excited that you that everybody listens and uh, mm-hmm. we have a lot of fun doing the show. So yep. so let's go ahead and wrap things up. That's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our f- email address, which is feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at intouchwithios. Support the show by uh, buying me a coffee at intouchwithios.com slash coffee. We would really appreciate it. You can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com slash in touch with iOS. We have two tiers available to support the show. Really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we're live streaming, uh, which today was early morning because it was a Friday and, we, and then we can get Patrice on the show. Uh, and uh, But you can go to youtube.com slash in touch with iOS and it will tell you when, when we record as well as uh, you uh, can... Uh, also check uh, rewatch the live streams as well as all the shows are on there as well um, and thanks to everybody in the chat room if it's, uh, I mentioned that in YouTube uh, uh, Mike and, and Ben and everybody in the chat room same place you go there when we stream live uh, youtube.com slash in touch with iOS so uh, check that out and uh, you also can go to our uh, Flipboard magazine which is in touch with iOS magazine which is many of the topics that we talk about are flipped into that magazine you can go there there's the links on the sh- in the show notes to listen to the show you can subscribe with your favorite podcatcher including Pocket Casts Overcast Apple Podcasts and many others but 
go to our website at intouchwithios.com where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I'm Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Mastodon at mastodon.cloud slash DaveG65 or Twitter, DaveG65. And the show was at it at In Touch With iOS. And Patrice Brenworth, thank you so much for being here. It's always a it's an absolute thrill when you're on the show. It, find it's you. always a lot of fun to do what you master going through <laughs> 15,000 topics every year. <laughs> like with us babbling in between and stuff. No, it's it's always fun. And it's like I'm yeah. I'm always very happy to, to be here. And I have Thanks. to send an email to feedback in touch with at in touch with iOS.com. And say, okay. what is this Patrice girl talking about? She has no clue. <laughs> 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 I, got, I got a couple of things wrong to say. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Where can people find you? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I'm usually on the British Tech Network with, with Dave and with Jeff on, on different shows. We have the non Apple British Tech Network big show on Thursdays, usually. Uh, we're taking Christmas break, but it will be back next week. And we also have the Apple, uh, the Apple focused Mac show on Fridays. So if you want to listen to that, listen to that or watch that. Um, and everything I'm doing, all the like social media links, to projects, the podcasts, like literally anything, is on thepatrice.com. Thanks, appreciate it. And Jeff Gamut, what a great year! Always appreciate your support of, of me and the show and being here. And uh, where do people find you? Well, uh, it has been a great year, and uh, and I really appreciate and enjoy getting to be on your show. So thank you. Yes. Um, all right. Where can people find me? Um, most Tuesdays on Mac Voices Live, here with you on usually Thursdays. Um, by the way, this is so cool getting to do this show with with both of you. Uh, I, I've been going through uh, Dave and Patrice withdrawals past couple Aww. weeks. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. The big show with uh, with Patrice, the Mac show with both of you, uh, Context Machine. Um, let's see. Tw- the the socials, Twitter, Instagram, Mastodon, whatever, Jay Gamut. And uh, uh, Google me. I'm easy to find. <laughs> Great. Um Again, I want to wish everybody a happy and prosperous new year. We had a great year of shows. You can listen to lots of them and listen to all the fun stuff we talked about this past year. Again, like I mentioned, this show will be dark next week for CES, but I will be back the following week. And, uh, and I really appreciate everybody listening. I can thank you all for being here and listening to the show. Really appreciate it. And we'll talk again soon.